Here goes introduction to the author. Beverly Naidu is a South African children's author who lives in the United Kingdom. She grew up in South Africa under apartheid laws that gave privilege to white children. Her first three novels, Journey to Joburg, Chain of Fire and Out of Bounds, are set in South Africa in the times when the country had apartheid. Some other books of Naidu include No Turning Back, The Great Tug of War and Other Stories, Out of Bounds, Stories of Conflict and Hope, Wave of Lies, which is a sequel to The Other Side of Truth, written in the year 2000, Burn My Heart, Call of the Deep, and Death of an Idealist. Naidu received Carnegie Medal in the year 2000 for The Other Side of Truth. She won the Joseph Frank Award twice in 1986 for Journey to Jobarg and in 1997 for No Turning Back, a novel of South Africa. Journey to Jobarg also won Britain's the other award. Characters of Beverly Naidu's Journey to Jobarg Naledi is a 13-year-old girl. Tiro is the brother of Naledi. The story Journey to Jobarg revolves around these two characters. These are the protagonist of the story and they are siblings. Another main character is Grace. She is a lady who works in the same neighborhood with the mother of Naledi and Tiro at Johannesburg, who promised these two children to help them meet their mother. Another minor character is the policemen who were at the station during the pass raids. Journey to Joburg explores the times of apartheid in South Africa. A 13-year-old girl named Naledi and her brother Tiro live with their little sister, their grandma and their aunt. The children's mother lives and walks in Johannesburg. One day, the children set off on a journey to find their mother and bring her back. On the way, they meet a woman named Grace, who works in the same neighborhood as their mother. It is arranged that Grace would help the children meet their mother at the Johannesburg station. It was rush hour when they got on the train to Sweto and the children clung on tightly to Grace. There was no sitting space and it felt as if all their breath was being squeezed out of them. Grown-up bodies pressed in from above and all around them. Some people laughed, some people sore and others kept silent as the train shook and lurched on its way. At each station, the crowd heaved towards the carriage door. People urgently pushing their way through. Naledi and Tiro tried to press backwards to stay close to Gress. As I have already said that the children set off on a journey to find their mother. So, they are on their way to Johannesburg station. The train became more crowded as it went through Sweto, which is the largest urban black settlement in South Africa. There was no place to sit. 
and thus the children got squeezed. The compartment had normal scene. Some people laughed and talked while the others were silent listeners. At each station, the crowd moved towards the exit door by pushing the people for boarding down from the train. Naledi and Tiro tried to stay close to Grace so that they were not moved by the crowd. But in a sudden surge at one of the stations, they found themselves being carried forwards, hurling out onto the platform. They desperately tried to reach back to the open door, but passengers were still coming out. Although the train was already beginning to move on, Naledi was just able to see Grace waged inside. She was trying to get out, but the train was on its way. Naledi and Tiro looked at each other in dismay. What now? But unfortunately, in a sudden forceful flow at one of the station, Naledi and Tiro themselves were being carried forward and thrown forcefully onto the platform. They tried to reach back to the open door, but they could not, as the passengers were still coming out, although the train has already started to move. From outside, Naledi could see Grace being squeezed into a limited space inside the train. Grace was trying to get out from the train as the children got separated from her, but she could not. As the train had already started moving towards its destination, the two siblings then looked at each other sadly and depressed as to what to do next. Everyone was walking towards the stairs which led to a bridge over the railway line. Soon the platform would be empty and the guard would see them. No tickets, no money, no idea of how they could find Gress. They would have to wait until she came back to get them. Yet, there was nowhere to hide on the platform. Now, they were on a platform without a ticket. They saw that everyone was walking towards the stairs which led to a bridge over the railway line and they were very sure that the guard would see them as soon as the platform gets empty. They were very worried as they had no tickets and they even did not have any money to buy tickets, nor did they have any idea how they could find Chris and get along with her. So, they had no other option except waiting for Chris to come back. But till then, they need to hide from the ticket collector, but they could not get a suitable place where they could hide themselves. Let's go and look from the bridge, Naledi suggested. Suddenly, without any warning, there was a commotion up ahead. Three figures in uniform stood at the top of the stairs. Police! Naledi suggested Tiro, her little brother, to go and look from the bridge. But suddenly there was too much noise and confusion and Naledi and Tiro saw three policemen standing at the top of the stairs. People began turning around and coming rapidly back down. Some began running along the platform towards a high bobbed wire fence at the other end. The runners leapt at the fence and scrambled over it. 
they noticed that people started turning around and coming quickly back down some began running along the platform towards a wired fence people who were running jumped at the fence and crept over it others jumped down to the track sprinted over the railway lines and clambered up to the opposite platform but just as they got there more policemen appeared on that side others jumped down the track few ran over the railway lines and clambered up to the platform on the other side but just as these two children got there more policemen appeared on that side word meanings first jo bark an informal name for the city of johannesburg in south africa second rush hour the time in the morning or evening when there is heavy traffic because people are traveling to or from work third sweto the largest black urban settlement in south africa fourth clung on means to held tightly fifth lurched moved forwards in a sudden unsteady way sixth heaved moved with great effort seventh surge means a sudden forceful flow eight hurling means throwing forcefully nine desperately showing little hope ten waged squeezed into a limited space eleven dismay a worried sad feeling hopelessness twelfth commotion a state of noisy confusion or excitement thirteenth scrambled moved quickly using hands too fourteenth sprinted means ran now here we have reference to the context let's go and look from the bridge who is the speaker here answer naledi is the speaker here second to whom was she speaking answer Naledi was speaking to Tiro. Third, whom were they looking for? Answer: They were looking for their aunt Grace. Here are some in-text question. Question number one: Where was Grace taking Naledi and Tiro? Answer: Grace was taking the children to meet their mother. at the johannesburg station second how were the children traveling answer the children were traveling by train third how old was naledi answer naledi was 13 years old fourth why did naledi and tiro go to the arrested man's house answer naledi and tiro went to the arrested man's house to get his pass